and you just don't want to have a lot of product in a place where you dang this washing machine. Now, let's see. I'm gonna show you, let me show you. You just do my eyes and I'd be like, what? <laughs> Why, what does that mean? All right, so I realized that every time that I mention my soft glam makeup look, I don't have an actual video of that soft glam look. So this is the video. Now I've already done my foundation. This is the YSL All Hours Full Coverage Luminous Matte Foundation. This is the shade Deep Sea Nine. I know that it's dark and what I do around here is I make it work, okay? I like to go darker and then it all builds up and lightens up. You're gonna see in this exact video. So make sure you give the video a thumbs up, follow me on all socials and let's get to it. Now, the thing with my soft glam look, which is a look that I do really all the time, unless I'm specifically doing a smoky eye look or something different, like, you know, a red or whatever. The idea of the look is the same, but the products may vary. For instance, the kit that I'm using right now is a different kit that I normally use in the bathroom. So the products are gonna be different. The idea is exactly the same. So I've done my foundation and now I'm gonna apply my concealer. This is the Kat Von D foundation. This is the Kat Von D. This is the Kat Von D concealer in the shade Tan 177. And let's apply this right under the eyes. I like to go really light with my concealer because I like for it to stand out. One of the great things about using a foundation on my skin tone that is darker than normal is that I won't have to contour as much. And in some cases, maybe not at all, because of course I will do a cream foundation, a cream contour and a powder contour. But depending on how it all comes out, I may only need to do one of those. And we will see how that comes out because this is my first time using this particular foundation. So I got an e.l.f. Cosmetics sponge. I already dampened it. I mean, I soaked it. Watch my video on how to make sure that your makeup sponges are actually damp and not soaked. So this is damp now. And I'm starting in the middle of my under eye area and then pinching and pouncing out toward the outer part of the face. Now I don't want this to go all the way to my hairline. And that is why I'm stippling it or pouncing it so that as I make my way toward the hairline, the amount of product is not as much as it could be, okay? So starting right here in the middle, keeping the front because I want that to dry a little bit more before I blend it. And you will see that with a highlight that is this light, it really is going to brighten the face. It's gonna take it from the foundation looking way too bright to it looking like, oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? If my foundation were to be lighter, maybe closer to my skin tone, then my highlight can't be too light because if my highlight were to be too light, like you might consider this to be too light, if I were to use this highlight, then the face would look washed out. Okay, so there's a science to all of this. I took some more so I didn't have enough right here because I want to create that reverse contour look by highlighting right down the side of my nose. Get right in here too so that there's no cakiness and weirdness going on over there, okay? Now, of course, I'm gonna highlight my T-zone because who doesn't, you know? Let me know if you are highlighting in this manner or are you only highlighting in certain areas? Because for me, if you are a beginner and this is hard for you, stick to just highlighting under your eyes if you do that. I feel like in 2023, Everyone who does makeup is at least highlighting under their eyes, but I could be wrong. Let me know because I feel like there are those of you who may just do eyes. I've heard of that. And I, I say this because I was once a makeup artist taking clients and I remember who being like, he just do my eyes and I'd be like, what? <laughs> Why? What does that mean? But anyway, if you're just doing eyes, I wanna know. And if you are doing just foundation, like just your base, I would like to know as well, just curious. So I am going to reverse contour by highlighting under my cheekbones. And I'm doing this quickly, but if you just need a reference point, think of the top of your earlobe and then go down. And you don't need to come all the way to your mouth, but close enough, okay? When I blend, I do pinch it and then blend right here at the middle area of the forehead. And again, blending it more so in the middle to blend out the majority of the actual product and then I'm making my way lightly to the edges of my face to make sure that what there are no lines of demarcation and then now down the middle of the nose and I am pinching this this I'm not worried about doing too perfectly because I'm going to contour so can you see that the face has already lightened up tremendously right and this is what I mean the darkness of that foundation before did not scare me one bit because look at how it all came out and honestly it looks like I have contoured and I haven't but I'm still gonna contour it because I like my contour to be like boom you feel me I'm gonna use the LYS this is a stick cream contour this is deep okay the color is called worthy it is a dork 
I normally apply this on my face and then I blend, but today I feel like applying it onto the brush and then blending. This is a deep, deep color in the greatest way. If you've used this and or have used this shade, please let me know. So let me twist some up a little bit. And this is a Rare Beauty foundation brush and I'm gonna take some of the product and right here, cause it already gave me the area to go, right? Right up in here and we're just blending it and pouncing it. See how I started in the middle of my cheek area and then made my way back and forth. That's the key, because if I started here, then I would have a lot of product here. The first place that I place the product is going to be the place where the majority of the product is. Yes, we do blend it out, but sometimes the blending don't be blending and you just don't want to have a lot of product in a place where you dang this washing machine. Okay, so you just don't wanna have a lot of product in a place where you don't wanna have a lot of product, okay? So blending this into my hairline, it's really important to get your contour into the hairline, honey, because why? Again, we don't want any lines of demarcation, honey. You know what, I'm sick and tired of this. Let's pull this wig back, you feel me? Because we need to get up in here. I don't want there to be any lines of demarcation. I don't want it looking crazy. It really needs to be in there, you feel me? Taking some more product and starting right here in the middle-ish. This is a very highly pigmented product, black owned brand at Sephora, love to see it. So placing it there and then we're gonna blend toward the back and then come toward the front. It's okay if there's a lot of product that ends up in the hairline. That's not usually ideal, but this is more okay than for it to be over here. Okay, that's why I say that. So that's why I started in the middle and went toward the back and then to the front. We're not dragging and wiping. No need to drag anything. I just prefer to use this stippling method to apply it. So I took some of the actual cream contour stick on this brush. This is a random brush that doesn't have a name, Luxie. It's the shape of this brush that I love. And we're going to, oh. Wow, as I was talking, I almost did something I don't recommend. And so I took some of the product on this brush. I'm gonna put it onto my hand in an effort to help diffuse it a little bit, okay? And then apply middle of the nose before I take it up to the brow. And I like to contour my nose. Tell me if you do this, I would say that this is also an advanced technique. I don't think that beginners should start off with this because if you get it wrong, it will just ruin your whole face. So if you're a beginner, comment and let me know. And also let me know when you practice or do you practice? Because I really and sincerely actually met someone the other day and she told me that I taught her how to do her makeup. I love that, I really do. It makes me so happy to know that these techniques help you. Yes, my channel is entertaining, it is informative, but are you using the techniques that I show you? Are you doing what I'm showing you to do or are you just here to watch TV? You feel what I'm saying? Now the highlight of the nose might look crooked, but it really does all come together. This, sometimes I get it perfectly, sometimes I be like, what in the world? So like I said about the sponge, using the back of it, this area is not really used much. I'm going to pounce where this line of demarcation is, the line between the highlight and the contour, turning it in this direction to keep it in the same place, to keep that small section where the highlight is and the top section where the contour is, okay? And then pay attention right here, turning it this way to keep it the same. This section where the contour is, this section where the highlight is, okay? And I'm not left-handed, but I do this sometimes just to make sure that I got the, a good handle on this sponge. You don't wanna transfer highlight to your contour and you definitely do not want to transfer a contour to your highlight. I have been in love with this Huda Beauty Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder. This is the shade Medium Tan 06. It is unusual to use such a product under the eye, but I've been doing this for several months and I love it. It takes the place of me having to put a highlight on the sides of my cheeks and it just looks so beautiful to be glowing right here. I'm gonna show you, let me show you. So I have my brush that I'm gonna be using. This is a Sephora 79 brush and this is a almost fresh product. Now just go right here with the pointy part of the sponge. Make sure that there is no creasing and yeah, you can use a damp sponge to apply this, but I stopped doing that and I don't know what it would look like with this luminous pressed powder. And I don't like taking the chances when I got things to do, you feel what I'm saying? So taking some of the product here and I'm looking down so I didn't want my eyes to crease and I just gotta get this right underneath there and do your best or I do my best to stay in a straight line right here. That might be a little bit anxiety provoking for you. Comment and let me know if you were like, what? That was so fast, how did that happen? But I do this all the time, right? When I first tried this product, if you saw the video, I hated it. I was mortified, but it reminds me of when I first did highlight. I was horrified, I hated it. Why? Because it was different. 
different. It was different. I wasn't used to it. I wasn't comfortable. But when you put the whole face together, which is the same when it came to my foundation, you gotta put the whole face together. It just looks delicious, okay? So the under eye is looking like frosted the snowman. Don't worry, okay? It's on. Like I said, come together. I like to use a powder foundation that is lighter than my skin tone to set the other parts of my face that are highlighted. I, of course, can use a translucent. That's also an option, but you know, I have a lot of stuff and I like to do a lot of things. This is the Elf Cosmetics Camel Powder Foundation. The color is Tan 450N. So the same brush, taking some of the product, and we're gonna go under the cheek. Now, what this is going to do is further highlight this area, and then really we're adding a little bit more coverage, you know? So right up in this area, and again, I am doing this stippling technique as well. No swiping, because why? And right over here. And if you see, and I didn't mention this before, the lighter concealer that I used, when blended into the darker foundation, really just melted and meshed together, you know? I think it's looking good. What do you think? Let me know. Now, this is the point where I would actually add to my contour with a powder, but this is looking so deep that I don't feel like I need to do that. So I'm not going to put a powder there. What I will do in this instance is set the contour because I don't want it to be too shiny. This is the Amicole Skin Melt Loose Powder. New black owned brand at Sephora, Senegalese, love it, okay? This is the brush that I use for my powder contour. Let me just use this. I mean, it's translucent, it's not gonna leave a color on here. So this is the Sephora 59 brush. I'm gonna take some of this product and Tap off the excess, ooh, because I don't want this to be too messy. I mean, loose powder in general is just like that, you feel me? Okay, when I'm using my other makeup kit, I normally would take the powder foundation, not the cream, the powder foundation on the brush, and I would apply it to my jawline. But I just realized that in this case, I used a foundation that was way darker than my skin tone, and I did bring it to my chin. You saw that, right? It was very light, a light application, but it was down to my chin. So when I looked, there is a differentiation between my highlight and my my jawline is what I mean. So in that case, I don't need to go over it with the powder foundation. I am good in that area. See, another way that using a darker color really does pull things together. You feel what I'm saying? Now I'm going to even it all out with a face powder. And when I say face powder, watch my video on face powders. This is the e.l.f. camo whole thing. And this is the color Rich 610C. You're gonna look at it and say, excuse me, yes. It's not going to be a deep color because I'm not trying to deepen my face so much. I'm just trying to bring it all together and add some warmth. It just is a whole thing. You feel me? In the bathroom, the one I use all the time is the Patrick Star Dark 4G Powder Foundation. And this is the one I have right here, but there are different products. It's just the color is usually the same. A light application of it but enough for it to really bring everything together. I know you see it. I know you see how this all came together. It is looking a lot more palatable, I would say. I do want my contour to be a little bit deeper toward my ear because when I do the blush, if I don't, it'll wash out. It just doesn't look how I want it to look, okay? So this is the Patrick Star One Size Made for Shade Bronze and Sculpt Trio. I'm using the middle one and this is the Sephora 59 brush. And I just took a little bit and went right here toward the perimeter of my face and then made my way in, right? Starting toward the back, making my way in. And then for blush, I love a good orange blush. Sometimes pink, like a, a magenta color, but usually I love a good orange. I'm gonna use the one size Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio, and I'm using the middle shade, which is GTFO, okay? This is a MAC brush. I've had this ever since I was working there. And this is the middle color with the smiley faces. Very pigmented, and then start in the middle of the cheek. This is so gorgeous. Comment and let me know what you're thinking about it, okay? And do you just see how beautiful the highlighted under eye just blends into the cheek? I think it looks gorgeous. and. And to further highlight this situation, I had a different highlighter in mind, but I cannot find it. So let me use this one. This is new. This is the Rare Beauty Pressed Highlighter. I normally use the liquid one. It's been a while since I've used this because I've been into the cream highlighters, which is not, I don't have one in front of me, but this one is new, this actual delivery of it, right? This is new and this is still the shade Flaunt. I'm gonna use my finger, ooh, beautiful and put it above my lip. Wow, gorge. I've always loved this shade. If you've been here, you know that I used to kill flaunt. And it's looking messy, it'll all come together, right? And then I'm gonna go down the middle of my nose. You could use a sponge to do this. Just using my finger. It being pressed like this is actually really good because then I can use my finger or my sponge, really, because it's still damp. And then that should help it melt. Yeah, 
that just melted so nicely. Now, let's see. We could go to the lip, but let's do the eyes. So brows, you know I like to use the Charlotte Tilbury situation. So do your brows the way you normally do them, you know? Comment below and let me know what your, your favorite brow pencil is. Someone told me that the NYX brow pencil on Amazon is really good, so I'm gonna try that. If you've tried it, let me know. I'll come back with the brows done. Now, of course, with the brows, you gotta highlight underneath it, right? Like, who's not doing that? My brows look very thick. I get it, this is what I like. <laughs> I do have a difference between my non-makeup brows, which is the microbladed brows, and then my makeup brows, which is this. I like it thick, what I like to do. So do what you like to do. This is a Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics Concealer in a color Deep Rich Golden, okay? So give us a little gold situation. And I'm putting some on the back of my hand and using this flat synthetic brush that I will link a dupe to below. And I go toward the middle of my brow, bring it down, and then I do the carve. I do not carve the top of my brow, just right here. Bring it down so there's not too much product when doing the actual carve, okay? And then we're not gonna bring this all the way to our hairline. Just keep it right here, you feel me? Right up in here. Boom. And then we're gonna blend that out. And now I'm gonna blend this with a fluffy synthetic brush. <laughs> and this one is from Carity. Just random brushes that have accumulated over the years. You could just use a fluffy brush that you would use with your eyeshadow and it'll still do the same thing. Or you can use your finger. I have on nails today, so the finger is a no-go for me. You feel me? All right, just blending that there. Not going to drag this to the outer part or even into my contour because I don't want that, that to just look weird, okay? Now with the fluffy brush, I'm gonna set this. I can set this with a color like the powder foundation that I use on the other parts of my highlighted areas or I can just use a translucent. So let's go back to the Amicole translucent powder and let's put some of that under my brows. Tapping off the excess. Whoa. And we're gonna actually take this all over the eyelid, you feel me? Because I'm not gonna do an eyeshadow base and I'll explain why in a second, but let's just put this all over, you heard? All right, so in the actual crease of my eyes, I like for it to be a warm color. I think red, orange, brown, okay? Like a warm brown, okay? So I'm gonna try to mix all those colors into the crease. There are lots of palettes that can actually achieve this look. It's inquantifiable, okay? Is that a word? I think it is. Google it, let me know. But let me show you how to do it with this Fenty Sunstalker palette, okay? I'm gonna use the second to last shade right here and get your fluffy eyeshadow brush. Always tap off the excess. We're gonna go right here in the crease. Now I'm gonna go down with this product first because then I'm gonna go over this with, why not just use the orange blush that we used? You feel me? So it's gonna give us that orange, you know what I'm saying? Let's grab this blush and go right over that section. We're gonna go, we're gonna go easy because you know this is very pigmented, okay? Look at that. Just wanna warm up the crease and I want want it to blend well, that's why I went with that color first, okay? If I went with this just by itself, it might look harsh and weird. I'm not trying to do an orange eyeshadow look. I simply want my crease to look nice and warm. Now, you have to identify your actual crease by putting your brush right here between your eyeball and your brow bone, okay? I like to bring my crease colors right up into the front of the brow. That is just an artistry technique that looks so sexy. I can't live without it, so I love that. And then I like for this crease color to also be under the waterline, so let's do that. So a smaller, flatter, fluffy brush, okay? Same. Let's just go with the orange because I don't need this really in the under the eye. Taking off the excess on the paper towel in front of me and now blending. I don't want this orange to look too wild under my eyes. We see it, right? Okay. Oh man, let me know if you see it. All right, and now to create basically a soft brown smoky eye, I'm gonna use this darker color here on the palette. Any brown that you have will work. Same brush, because we do wanna blend the colors, you know? And right here over the eyelid, we're gonna create this soft glam brown smoky eye. Nothing too elaborate and wild. Of course, the smoky eye could be darker and more bold, but that doesn't need to be the case for an everyday look, although it could. Okay, although it could, you know, I really like to do what I like. <laughs> so it could, but not not in this case right now. So I'm blending this and bringing it up to the crease area as well. And then I'm gonna take this color down underneath my waterline.
And now, of course, the lashes, I always use these ones from AliExpress. All links are below. These are less than $2. I buy them in bulk. They are beautiful. And the lash glue that I like to use is this Kiss. This one looks real raggedy. Kiss I Envy Super Strong Holds. So I love a good nude lip on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm gonna use these two new products, which will give me the same idea, what I normally do. This is the Makeup by Mario Lip Pencil in the color Chris. And then this is a Rare Beauty Lippy that I just got recently. I can't even read it. This is the color Elevate. Let's try this out. Oh, it's not light enough for me. First of all, it's not giving me coverage and it's not giving me a lightness. No. Ugh. Okay, that was a fail. But this is the idea of a color that I like to wear. This is not gonna work. Let's try something else. You can never go wrong with these Maybelline matte inks. This is a shade 95, Captivated. I know this is full coverage. I think I waited too long for my lash glue to dry. I applied the glue and was doing my lippy and forgot. <laughs> these lashes are nice and fluffy. I love them because they take a very neutral look and make them look very dramatic. And normally I use my fingers to press my lashes together, but with these nails, I can't do it. So I like to use this product right here from Revlon. I'll link it below. Under my eye, I like to use the Lawless One and Done Mascara. It is just beautiful. All right, all right. Here we have the finished look. This is my, what I used to call my basic everyday look. This is really soft glam. Okay, let's not, let's not even play her like that. This is my soft glam makeup look again give the video a thumbs up if you love it comment and let me know what you think about this look in general and as always i'm glad you're here thanks for watching the video and i'll see you in the next one bye